So we're here at the example table. In this video, we're going to look at an example of trig substitution. In particular, the integral of the square root of 5 plus 4x minus x squared dx. Now when we look at this, in general, we're not going to be told that this is a trig substitution example. So you'll have to think about how you might go about solving this. And one of the good things to keep in mind is that when you're given a quadratic polynomial, you can complete the square good to have all those techniques from algebra in mind when you're looking at these things. They can give you lots of good approaches to these problems. So completing the square means that we can rewrite this thing as something squared, some quantity involving x squared, plus a constant. And in this case, when we complete the square, we get 9 minus x minus 2 quantity squared. Now, this is something that you can easily verify now that this expression under the square root is equal to this one. And if you're unsure how to find this, you should review completing the square. So now, what can we do? In this case, we want to use the, the sine squared plus cosine squared identity because we have a constant minus this uh, quantity involving x squared. So the thing being squared is what we want to get rid of. So let's set x minus 2 equal to something, let's say, sine. So let's set it equal to sine theta. But we don't want it equal just to sine theta because then we'll get 9 minus sine squared theta. And we don't have an identity for that. We want 9 minus 9 sine squared theta. So we can factor out the 9's. So to get that when we square, we'll put a 3 in front of sine. So x minus 2 is being set equal to 3 sine theta. This means that dx equals 3 cosine theta d theta. So let's now rewrite this integral in terms of theta. So we get the integral of the square root of 9 minus 9 sine squared theta, and we'll replace dx with this expression, so times 3 cosine theta d theta. Do a little simplification inside this square root. So we can factor a 9 out of both of these terms, and then take the square root of that, so we get 3. And what we're left with inside is 1 minus sine squared theta, and that's cosine squared theta. So under the square root, we're left with cosine squared theta. So times 3 cosine theta d theta. Do a little bit more simplification and rewriting on the next page. So we had two copies of 3. So now we're looking at the integral of 9. And we had a cosine squared under a square root, which is just cosine squared, and one other copy of cosine. So we're left with cosine squared theta d theta. Now, there are different ways of approaching this integral. Let's use another trig identity that lets us rewrite cosine squared in terms of just cosine. So this is the integral of 9 times one-half plus one-half cosine two theta. And now we can integrate each of these terms individually. So we have nine-halves, that becomes nine-halves theta, plus nine-halves cosine two theta, which becomes, well, let's be careful, this becomes something involving sine of two theta, And when we take the derivative of this, we want to get a coefficient of 9 halves. We know that when we take the derivative, we're going to get a copy of 2 outside. So we better make this coefficient 9 fourths, right? 9 fourths times cosine 2 theta times 2 gives us 9 halves cosine 2 theta. And again, let's not forget plus c. So we want to rewrite this in terms of x. And let's draw, well, let's draw the triangle. 
So we have a nice blue triangle. Let's label theta. And remember that we set x minus 2 equal to 3 sine theta. So this tells us that sine theta is x minus 2 over 3. So let's set this side equal to x minus 2 and the hypotenuse equal to 3, which gives us this side equal to 9 minus x minus 2 quantity squared. And you'll notice it's not a coincidence that when you draw these triangles, this third side that you fill in is usually the expression that you started with. So, where can we get sine of 2 theta from this? Because this is what we need. We can get theta, but we need sine of 2 theta. So how do we do that? Well, let's use another identity. So this is 9 halves theta plus something that doesn't involve trig functions of 2 theta, but rather just trig functions of theta. And the identity is that sine 2 theta equals 2 sine theta cosine theta. So 9 fourths sine 2 theta is the same as 9 halves sine theta cosine theta plus c. So let's actually solve for theta in this thing. So this gives us x minus 2 over 3 equals sine theta, from which we see that theta is arcsine of x minus 2 over 3. So this thing is now equal to 9 halves times theta, which is this expression, arcsine of x minus 2 over 3 plus 9 halves times sine theta cosine theta. So this is 9 halves. Sine theta is x minus 2 over 3. So 9 halves times x minus 2 over 3. And cosine theta is the square root term over 3. So times the square root of 9 minus x minus 2 squared over 3 plus c.